the conventional wisdom, you know, when you looked at your team off from last year, which went to the Sweet 16, won the Big Ten Championship, was you lose Walton, you lose Irvin, DJ Wilson goes pro. I mean, those were three big pieces. So this seemed like a rebuilding year from the outside, and yet here you are once again back in the NCAA tournament really playing well. So was it Wagner coming back? What what, what was it that you thought, I, I guess, led yeah, you, led I you back here? It was... Yeah, I think there was a, uh, you know, just the evolution of, of as people waited their turn. Muhammad Ali was waiting his turn to, 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 to be a guy that we dial up more and it could really uh, guard people. Xavier Xavier Simpson was waiting his turn, and you know, those are, those are tough times. I, you know, it's we never have a player that wasn't a star in high school play at Michigan, and now they got to come and they sort of got to wait their turn. But when they do, they get better. Uh, they grasp college basketball much better. And uh, it's really been a uh, it, it's it's the evol- it's the way it should be really that you earn it and uh, you don't walk in and all of a sudden it, it's there. So you see that right now with Isaiah Livers and Jordan Poole and Eli Brooks. They they've all had their moments and they have their moments where they're sitting on a custom on the bench because there there there's so much growth potential there, but it, it, it's not there yet. When did I think, I think that's 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 the key. When did you realize that uh, John Teske was going to be a force coming off the bench? Because that's, that's he's been a godsend. Well, he he, uh, I I don't think he he's been inconsistent, but he also in that in that Big Ten tournament with with Mo uh, getting in foul trouble early in a couple of games, he really came in and uh, just sort of uh, did some of the things we expected him to be able to do when he, when we recruited him. But again, very quiet young man, a very laid back personality and it's not natural for them to be out there and be aggressive like that. And, uh, but he was, and that's the way he's got to continue to do it. Uh, Cause in the championship game, he was a real force for us and we probably don't win the game without him playing that way. So we need that from him um, as we get into this game. Cause Montana is no joke. Montana is the real deal on everybody. They're the real deal. And uh, we're going to have to play extremely well to, uh, to win. And I think that's goes, for the rest of the rest of the tournament, you have to play well every day, or, you, or you, you'll probably go home at this time of the year. And their junior guards, Rory and Ogwine, uh, seem to be really a tough duo, aren't Ooh. they? Yeah, they're really they're two Big Ten guards. I mean, uh, Rory started out at Oregon. Uh, Ogwine is now a junior who was. They're just veterans. Uh, they've really played, and uh, they could score from the outside. They they both pass the ball well. Uh, they're a really good defensive team too. So. There's great challenges here, but it's just that that's what you expect. Now, there's so little difference in in when you get into where we're seated and things like that. There, you know, there may be big differences between a one and sixteen game, uh, but after that, and some two fifteens might be might be matchup uh, it may not be equal. But once you get into these other ones, I don't think the committee can tell between a ten and fourteen. Really, I don't think that it's hard to tell between a three and a six. And you just it's you're just in in play against almost a blind draw somehow somehow, and it's all about matchups as far as how you can advance. We're talking to Michigan head basketball coach John Beeline here on the Troy Laser Hotline. Wolverines will take on Montana Thursday night at nine fifty. You were a big champion of the Big Ten tournament being in in New York, and and probably it helps that you guys won it, so you probably feel yeah. even better about it. But um, the big question we all have, and maybe you have as well, is this whole week off or two weeks off between yeah. games. Do you yet know what the result's going to be, or are you going to find out like the rest of us on Thursday night? Yeah, we'll find out. I mean, I, there's no way you can know, and it's it, it certainly is unusual, but it's been done before. Uh, I, I've uh, done this at uh, Canisius and at Richmond, and I think we were one and one in those situations. And then, you know, the Gonzagas and Wichita States have been doing this for years, and uh, they've all done pretty well in the NCAA tournament. Mm-hmm. So we, we, we use that week to get better, to shore up a lot of things, to also get rest. We practice four days. We took three days off, usually take one day off. And we just uh, tried to to stay as sharp as we can. We had a a good uh, scrimmage on uh, Friday against ourselves. Uh, And now we're going to, we're going to really go at hard at them today. Um, Then back it off a little bit tomorrow. So I I think we're in normal rhythm. Um, And uh, I'm of the mindset that the layoff will not have any effect on this game. It's we're going to have to play well. And, uh, if we get beat, it, it, we, if we win, it, we played really well. If we get beat, Montana was a better team. It won't be about the layoff or the travel or the site or anything. We're just playing ball. 
As you know, these games come down to the wire so often. Are you worried at all about the free throws that uh, your team has had problems with this year? I, I worry about, you know, too many things, as you can tell. <laughs> uh, but but I, I, free throws have always been a really um, a, str- a strength of our teams in the past. Um, but I remember we lost the Big Ten Championship one year when, when uh, uh, Glenn Robinson – uh, Tim Hardaway and Trey Burke missed consecutive one and ones when we were up by five with about 40 seconds to go, and they were all 70 to 90 percent shooters. Yeah, it, we, we've uh, we've gone through a lot of these things. We've had a big enough lead where it didn't make a difference, but now we're going to have to make them, and it's a little bit different. It's it's different in a Big East tournament when the, it's on the line. I think we had great practice there, but. If you ask me, uh, we'll be practicing foul shooting today at practice. Yes, we will. And we'll do it again tomorrow, and we'll do it again uh, the day of the game. So we'll work on all those things, and we just, we're just getting better at it, which I like. Hey, John, this is kind of separate from your team, but there was an article in The Athletic last week about you and your connection with your son, Patrick, who's the coach at LeMoyne. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm curious, would that be a dream matchup or a nightmare matchup? Would you dream of coaching <laughs> against Patrick, or would that be the worst thing that ever happened to you? Because I – Oh, Some fathers you know, I, feel I different did. about that. Oh, no, I, I do not want to do that. No, no. It, it, we, we did it in an exhibition game three years ago. And I can re, be remembering talking about, well, how am I going to explain to the press how, that we just lost to LeMoyne <laughs> and my son? You know, it's, uh, it, but he's, uh, he's got a big game tonight. It's a sweet 16 game back in Syracuse. Uh, if they win, they go to an elite eight. And uh, the uh, division two only has two, two weekends. So he's, uh, he's, uh, uh, if he wins, he'll he'll win that bracket pod, and then he'll go into final eight out in North Dakota, South Dakota, somewhere. So we'll well, unfortunately, we'll be on the plane while he is playing, and I do not know if we have internet on the plane, but uh, we uh, will. Either way, we're going to find out. I, we won't be able to. Wa- I don't think we'll be able to watch it. Uh-huh. And um, if but we'll land, and we'll find out whether he's a champion of that at Northeast region. So I'm really proud of him. Really proud. Of him. He's it, done a great job. Is your wife more of a Wolverine fan or a Dolphins fan right about now? Uh, I think she's both. both. She does a great job of staying in between. But if we were playing each other, she'd probably be a Wolverine fan. Okay. Uh, no, I'm sorry. She'd probably be a Dolphin fan if we were playing each other. She, I think she likes Patrick just a touch more than she <laughs> may like me. That's blood. That's blood. That's yeah. her blood. Yeah, I can understand that. Well, it's great talking to you. Good luck uh, on uh, Thursday, and hopefully we'll talk to you next week heading into the Sweet 16. Appreciate the time, Coach. All right. All right. Sorry about the mix-up and not coming on on time. All right. But thanks very much. No problem. No there problem. he is. John Beeline, the head coach of the Michigan Wolverines, joining us here on the Troy Laser Hotline. Jamie and Stoney Show, 97 won the ticket.